Shine, Bloodline, and Godsend. Exactly three players on each team. So it's kind of even Stevens. I mean, even once again, I mean, we had five teams with still every single team having three, but now we're down even further down the loophole. A bloodline getting really close to time to shine. I think they might be the two teams to really take the fight first. But what really happens, this is a Mexican standoff that we mentioned time and time again into this. The team that fights first, the two teams that fight first specifically, are going to be pretty heavily hurt by that. Is it by using damage, some utility, taking some damage, even losing a few players along the way? And that is when the third team just not fighting. That's their time to strike. That is the time to try and capitalize on the teams having a disadvantage and take that game away. Phase eight, where is it gonna go? Who is it gonna benefit? Oh, time to shine. Able to find a bit of damage onto Burian. So he's got himself a nice little hay bale on that. Hay bale is gonna give you the edge quite a fair amount. He's able to find Swave. Nice, pretty close to going down himself. But Burian, he has been relentless. Such a good amount of spray, but he's gonna be actually able to find Swave. Confirm that kill for himself. I think at that point in time, confirming kills is not the most important thing. You wanna find Nox because Rezes in such an open field is always gonna be really hard to pull off. So the Nox are the main priority for Bloodline and Godsend as a whole as they're sending Navi forward to try and get a little bit more information and a foothold in the circle you might not be able to see on your map actually went over to the west. Will. Gonna be going down. Oh my god. Well, there you go. That's the end of Time to Shine. Absolutely destroyed. There's now Bloodline in this game trying to find information. It's gonna be turned into a 3v3. Kapahal on the left side could have a little bit of an advantage but once again goes back to a little slow approach. And no team is really hurt because of that. So really, that doesn't allow Godsend to capitalize on push on this team as a great molly will be chucked towards Allen. Nice by Kapahala. Getting a nice knockdown into Mario. And that makes it a 3v2. Bloodline have been aggressive. They've been proactive. Can they secure their first chicken dinner? This would be definitely a big time for Bloodline to do it, especially because you've got to be careful. Kapahala on the side, as I mentioned it earlier, right? Able to find himself Marley. And now I think Marley just push him forward into the circle. You're not going to get rushed up. You're there to literally just give information to the rest of his team. Unfortunately, he's going to be going down really quickly. And that's going to be Bloodline picking up an extra kill. And I said it like constant earlier. They had already five kills. Now up to seven. They're claiming quite a fair amount for themselves. So really, really props to them. And now Bloodline trying to just choke down onto God's and make sure they just can't move an inch. If they move an inch, that's going to be one pixel out of place. And Bloodline should easily be able to pick up on it. And talking about pixel out of place, they're going to be able to find quite a fair amount of damage on three. Three goes down. And now it's all in the hands of Navi. Able to find himself one play on the side. As Reeves going to try and push away from this location. Be careful. He can still give a lot of intel over. But that's going to be Allen down into 1v1. Burian and Capella both drop down instantly. I mean, Navi has able to, been able to clutch into the past. And can he do that once again to take that first chicken dinner away? Or will it be over for Alan? Alan peeks up and there you go. That's Bloodline. They're in their very first chicken dinner in the full split European PMCO. They were going to get it eventually. And today was the day they get it. It was that proactiveness. Yeah, did they have a couple of hay bales, which meant in theory they didn't have to prone. They could crouch up. They could fire it.